Okay, so um, we should start. Um, this is a uh, it's a double honor for me uh, because first uh, the Speed Grillicus lecture is uh, honors you know. Uh, Someone who was a great uh, uh, friend and a great uh, pioneer for our new economic school. Uh, Zvi was uh, working from the very beginning uh, to uh, help us uh, develop the school. And on the 20th anniversary, it's just uh, good to remember uh, that that's the case, uh, as well as being one of, you know, the most important economists of the 20th century. Um, certainly, had, had he lived longer, would have won the Nobel Prize for work on uh, econometrics and technology and diffusion. Um, and it's an honor for me because I get to introduce uh, Ariel Rubinstein for the second lecture of the Zvigrilikas uh, lectures. Um, yesterday, Sergei gave a long introduction, and so I won't. Uh, give a long introduction because uh, Ariel doesn't really need one, but I will say that since uh, the New Economic School, like Penn State, has a Nobel Prize lottery, I wouldn't. I would advise people that uh, Ariel would be a very good bet. Uh, uh, just like uh, previous Svigrilikas uh, uh, lecturer Roger Meyerson gave the Svigrilikas lecture soon after won the Nobel Prize, so I would. Uh, think that that's a pretty good case here as well. Uh, but uh, today, the second of the three lectures, Ariel's going to talk about the Colonel Blotto game. And uh, rather than listen to me, let's uh, listen to Professor Rubenstein. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You remember the introduction uh, that I gave yesterday, let me just repeat, so the structure of these uh, lectures, uh, so I plan was to introduce three angel angles of uh, tackling or studying or talking about uh, boundary rationality issues. Yesterday I tried to talk a little bit about what I call at least new economics, whether it's acceptable definition or not. Uh, today I will talk more about, maybe about experimental approach <coughs> to boundary rationality, and tomorrow will be in some sense a more, uh, not in some sense, it will be a much more theoretical uh, model where I will try to present uh, a new model in a particular context, uh, full stop. So, uh, so what I want today, in some sense, of course, the, the, the title in some sense uh, is, uh, well, as many titles, uh, uh, tries to, to capture your imagination. Probably in this country I should uh, have added the word KGB somewhere uh, to the top secret files that I'm going to discover here. But the truth is that uh, I'm more than I'm interested in calling it Lotto game. I'm interested in the uh, second line which is uh, to suggest some, or to talk about some procedure of uh, uh, use, uh, some procedure of uh, that players might uh, use, and I will claim that many of them do uh, use when they play a game like the Colonel Blotto's game. So the target is more, uh, I will talk also about Colonel Blotto's game, of course, it's, I cannot escape the, the, <coughs> the temptation, but nevertheless, the, it is uh, take this lecture as a part of the, this trio, and uh, as a part of this trio, the emphasis is not on the current global scale itself, but using it as a platform. I should say that the lecture today is an outcome of a joint work with a former student of mine, Ayala Arad. Uh, she finished the PhD last year, and now she's a, she's a, a postdoc in Berkeley, uh, coming back to Tel Aviv probably uh, next year. 
so the target, as I already hinted, is to get some insights about choice procedures which I, are used by players in games with many strategies. Why I'm interested in this target? I'm interested in this target like many other uh, game theoreticians who work also on the boundaries of boundary rationality because we have a dream. And the dream is after we establish such procedure is one day to, uh, some of us did it already, uh, uh, did work on, on this line, is, uh, is one day to, to, to put these procedures into a more interesting interactive model. A strategic interactive model. But before we do it, before we just invent those procedures that we insert into the models, we want to get some re reaction from the field, some reaction from the data, to make it more sure, or more certain, or less arbitrary than uh, the assumptions that we are going to assume. As I said, the platform is going to be, a, a, as some of you know about Colonel Blotto's game, let me say right from the beginning, we are going to talk about a version of the Colonel Blotto's game. It will not be exactly what people usually call the Colonel Blotto's game, but it will be, I will explain exactly where is the different, uh, difference. There is also actually there are two differences. One is that we, we discuss, we are going to discuss as a platform a variation of the Colonel Blotto's game. And the second is that we are going to talk about a tournament version of the, uh, of the game. Again, I will explain in a few minutes what I mean by these deviations. Uh, the Colonel Blotto game. I'm going to report, I'm going to talk about the game, but maybe I'm going to talk about experimental results which are connected with the Colonel Blotto game. And here are the instructions. Uh, students, uh, yesterday I talked about the, the method that I'm using to collect information. I will explain later that here actually I did it also in another method. But in case, basically most of the subjects actually used the, the, the tool that I discussed yesterday, namely the site getfury.tru.acil. And the problem that they got was uh, roughly uh, the following. You are a commander of an army during wartime. This is just to make people excited. You know, people are excited for wartime. Which is about to do battle with the enemy's army. Now you're really, really angry. You want to beat the enemy. Each commander decides how to allocate his 120 troops across six battlefields. In a particular battlefield, the commander who assigned the larger number of troops wins the battle. Both of you lose in the case you assign the same number of troops to a particular battlefield. Let me say just right from the beginning uh, that actually the, the, the last, uh, the last uh, point, namely what's happening in the case of a tie, this is a, a point of uh, deviation from the standard Blotos game. Most of the people when they analyze the Blotos game assume that if, uh, if we both, uh, both uh, the two gen general, generals put the same number of uh, of uh, troops on one battle, then each of them gets one half point, one half battle, or with probability 0.5 wins the battle. And here, in some sense, the picture that I have in mind is that if the number of troops is equal, then each of them kill one another and none survives the battle to, to put the flag. Of course, it's not necessary interpretation, but since, again, it's not supposed to be a realistic game, it's supposed to be more just a tool to study whatever we study, then, and for reasons that I will explain in a few minutes, um, uh, we, uh, I, I thought that this is a better variation uh, for the, of, the, of the plot of the game to be studied. Please read it again. Those of you who have not seen it, this game or variation of this game before, please read it again and then I'll read it with you because it's necessary really that you will be inside the game with all your spirit and uh, whatever. So you are a commander, you have 100, you are going to battle another enemy's <coughs> army, you have 120 troops, you can allocate them, of course, only uh, by integers uh, across six battlefields. And uh, you are going to win each of the battlefields in a case that a, a battlefield, if you put strictly more troops on the battlefield than you, you uh, open it. In the case of a, uh, of a tie, none of you get any point. Uh, to make it more vivid, so 
now, now you probably recognize the generals. I was told that actually this is almost an historical event uh, in this particular case, but this was, I didn't know enough history for that, but uh, if you want to get, you listen to it. So this is now audio and video, whatever. say one thing that is important that the six battlefields were actually in, uh, in the experiment were uh, described on one row as you will see later the, the, the framing of the, the, the geography of the six battlefields is not unimportant it's not unimportant to say my view. okay now before I continue uh, let me ask you uh, one thing, which is uh, don't, don't raise your hand, don't suggest strategies, but just think to yourself for, few, for one minute, what would you do in a situation like that? What would you do in a situation like that? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. That's, uh, that's actually, I missed the, the next slide. <laughs> and, 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 and that's actually uh, the tournament version. So actually think about it, that actually you are going to play the game against, uh, you are going to choose a, a, a strategy, you are going to choose a location. And this location is going to be played against all other colonels. So each of you is a colonel. Okay, each of you is a colonel. Each of you is going to, to, uh, to choose a strategy. Once you choose a strategy, a simple strategy, this strategy is going to be played against each other colonel in this room. You will get a number of points, you will get a number of points, and uh, so you might get any number between zero and in principle even six, uh, because uh, yeah, we, do, we, I don't, uh, I don't, we don't force to allocate all the 120 troops, in principle somebody can even put zero, zero, zero. Uh, so, but of course you cannot get less than zero, not more than six. And the number of points, uh, the number of points uh, uh, will be summed up. And uh, the winner of the tournament, only one of you guys, think about it as if, one of you guys will be declared to be the winner of this tournament. So what we are you going, it's not that you're going to, to play against Napoleon, okay? It's not that you're going to play against a particular Napoleon, but actually we are now in the academy uh, of the army, and we want to train you to think strategically. <laughs> I don't, but as if. And I would like actually to, to find who is the person in the room that actually one day, if you have to fight against a real, ba a real battle, then actually your ability to think strategically will be the best in the sense that you will, on average, the number of battles that you will win will be the larger against the other potential generals. Sorry, what happens if there's a tie? A, a tie in a yeah. battle. Uh, so, I'm in three and one of so then you get three So each of you get three points. Ah, okay. So it might be that so you... In, get... in this case, there is no win in this No, again, 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 again. If in the tournament there are many players, think about it actually that you play against the group is very large, at least. 40, 50, 60, 70, probably 2,000, okay? So you are going to, to prepare yourself to play against a variety of strategies, okay? Now, if the situation is that there is only a, a, so of course still it may be the case that actually two generals will get, so again, you get, you choose a strategy, thanks for the questions, it's very important to clarify this point. Each of you chooses a strategy, the strategy, one strategy, Okay. The one strategy is going to be played in the tournament, namely by the computer. The computer is going to match each of the strategies against all other strategies that were chosen by the other participants in the tournament. So each of you is going to get, if there are 100 players, you will get 99 scores. Each of the scores may be a number between 0 and 6. And you will get the sum of the score. The 
the sum of the scores. But then, actually, it's not the sum of the scores itself that you are interested. What you are interested is uh, to be uh, to be the winner. Okay? You are interested. Your goal. You asked about the goal, rightly so. So the goal that was declared to the students was you are supposed to be the winner in the tournament. You want to be the best Napoleon or the best whatever. Now I should say that uh, so, uh, the, the, the immediately since you asked, that this is the two, uh, so as I said before, there are two deviations here from the standard. Uh, the standard. Please ask. Uh, it's very important, especially in this stage. Please. Please ask. Ask me. Are you sure? Yeah, we're just already discussing. All right. That's really important. Uh, uh, no collusion is forbidden. Yeah, it's fine, 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 fine. No collusion between the players, in principle at least. Of course, maybe that some students were talking one with another, but of course, if the number is large, it's not very likely and that it's very effective. But again, let me emphasize it's not the same as the standard uh, uh, global game because of the fact that in case of a tie in a, in a field, then both get zero, not 0.5. So that actually makes the match, the game between two generals, it's not a, a, not exactly a zero-sum game, it's almost a zero-sum game, we'll talk about it in a second, but it's not a zero-sum game because in principle, if I choose 20, 20, 20, 20, and you choose 20, 20, 20, then both of us get zero, okay, uh, number one, and number two, it's a tournament and not a standard game. And the reason here is uh, actually the two, the two deviations from the standard uh, experiments in, with the block again are supposed actually to increase the strategic thinking. My, at least my feeling was that once actually a tie is not uh, is, uh, actually harmful, then actually you are uh, you, you will uh, make uh, more efforts, or yeah, let's say you will try to avoid the 20, 20, 20, 20 strategy, and you will try to think more strategically about what to do, because actually 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 could be quite disastrous. Uh, number one, the tournament, you know, that's actually experimental method, uh, which actually the first person, to my knowledge, to experiment with tournament was uh, Axel Roth, in a very famous tournament that he ran in the late 70s and reported in the early 80s about the prisoner's, uh, the, uh, the prisoner's dilemma, what Axel Rowe did, he asked uh, several dozens of game politicians to write, to write a computer or to suggest a strategy or to, write a, 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 to, to suggest a strategy to be played in a finite, finitely repeated prisoner's dilemma and he matched each of the programs or each of the strategies against other or other, and then he declared, uh, if I remember correctly, it was the tit for tat actually was the, the winner of this of this tournament. So what we do here, in some sense, is the same technique. Namely, again, you choose one strategy. You cannot choose one strategy against him and one strategy against her. Players are anonymous. You you you, you choose one strategy, and in uh, again for another lecture to 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 defend this particular. Uh, experimental design, but um, but I, I think that overall this tournament uh, uh, triggers more strategic thinking, and, uh, and my belief is that most of the most of the players, most of the subjects overall thought about the game as a two-player game, even though even though they were participating in the tournament. But again, that's open to discussions. Okay, so that's the tournament. Do we only play it once? That's the, so do we only play it once? They played it only once. Only once. Mm -hmm. All experiments that I report, there is no repetition. They played it only once, got the glory or not, and continued with their lives. Okay? Uh, of course, the situation would be completely different if they would play uh, the game several times, and then also, of course, then actually we will, this will be a platform to study other things in particular. Uh, this will be then a platform to study learning in games, but that's not the target of this. This is not the target of this, of this uh, experiment. Any questions? And now after this discussion, each of you hold in your mind some strategy how to allocate. Don't tell me what it is, but okay, let's continue. 
So, um, uh, as I said, uh, the, of course, we did not, uh, we were not the first to, to discuss the, 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 the Blotto game. Usually, the Blotto game is uh, credited to not less, not more than Borel, the mathematician Borel himself. Uh, actually, Borel's uh, paper in 1921, almost 100 years, um, it was translated in the 50s by Savage, that's the great Savage. Uh, Savage actually translated several papers uh, into English and published them in Econometrica in around 53. And this is one of them. Borel discussed, uh, not, of course, again, not exactly this version of the, of the Lotto game. He discussed a continuous, of course, a mathematician. So he discussed a continuous version of the game, and, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a small, a very beautiful uh, paper with many of the ideas around the Lotto game appears, of course, in this paper. Uh, there are several uh, recent papers that analyze this game, uh, of, or actually, uh, again, not exactly the version that I, we study here, but the original version. Um, uh, and uh, some of them, uh, like Robertson, uh, studied the continuous version, and uh, there is an excellent paper by Sergio Hart in IJGP 2008, which studied the discrete colonel block again. Uh, let me again emphasize from an analytical point of view, it's much more difficult to analyze the discrete game. Uh, there is a huge number of strategies and to find, just to find or characterize the Nash equilibrium of the game, even not the tournament, but even just for two player game, is not an easy task and Sergio did a wonderful job in this respect. Uh, I should probably tell you that roughly speaking, roughly speaking, it's not exactly, and it's not exactly this version of the game, but nevertheless, just to get impression, roughly speaking, what Sergio showed is that the strategy, basically, our strategy, the, the equilibrium strategies are such that players use such a strategy, such that the marginal distribution of troops in each of the fields is uniform between 0 and 40. Let me repeat. So roughly speaking, what he finds is that the equilibrium, the Nash equilibrium, is such that it must be that the marginal distributions over each of the fields is roughly uh, 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 uniform between zero and four. Uh, okay. Now the way that we uh, experimented it uh, after the last uh, uh, yesterday's talk, you. you you are familiar already with the type of method that I like. Uh, this time, uh, 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 I think that it's in particular important to conduct the experiment on a huge, uh, on a huge uh, sample. The number, just to make sure uh, that you, you see it, the number of strategies in this game is huge. It's something like in the magnitude of 250 million strategies. Uh, even if you ignore the order, and if you if up to permutations, so let's say that uh, 30, 20, 10, 20, 20, 20 is like 20, 20, 20, 30, 20, 10, then you have something like in magnitude of 400,000 permutations. That's a huge number, and to get any information about the way that people really think about it, you must get, you must get a huge sample, otherwise you will get quite nonsense. Uh, but that's again, it's not my, it's not a, an apology. I think that this is the right way, in my opinion, to, to conduct experiments these days. We have the tools and we can get a, a huge samples. Of course, uh, we can debate this issue later. Uh, this was done uh, like the, the experiment that I talked about yesterday, almost without incentives, or at least without any monitor incentives. There were a little incentives, I will explain them in a second. Now, the samples, actually, we're going to report, in the reports of the results, I'm going to, <coughs> to distinguish between two groups, <coughs> two samples. One sample, I will, call it, I will call it classes. The classes are the subjects that I get exactly in the methods that I discussed yesterday. Namely, these are students around the world. In this case, actually, 25 students from 25 countries participate in 129 groups. And uh, we have, uh, in this sample, we have something like 4,600 students. Um, the, this, again, let's also see who have not been yesterday. These are students who, that, I, uh, that uh, 
the instructor or the teacher uh, register to the site and assigned this problem in the course of teaching, a course in game theory, assign this question without, uh, of course, without any knowledge of which will be used here. Uh, but, um, uh, but presumably it was assigned as a part of his teaching, teaching method uh, as a deductive device in his teaching in his class. I have another, we have another, so this is the, what the slide that you have seen yesterday. But there is a second sample, and the second sample is very important uh, for this discussion today. And I will call it, I will use the word in Hebrew, Kalkalist. Uh, Kalkala means in Hebrew economics, and the Kalkalist is uh, actually an Hebrew business daily, <coughs> something like the <coughs> uh, Small Financial Times or something like that. It's not like that important, but nevertheless, it's quite a good newspaper, a daily newspaper, quite a young one. That, um, that uh, I have a good connection with the, with the editor, and uh, we got uh, an agreement a few years ago, three years ago, that he will allow us <coughs> to, uh, to approach uh, his uh, readers, both by, right, by, uh, through the, the print and through the email, and asking the, the, the readers to, to get, it was around Passover, it was a location, so to get into our website and to respond and to respond to this question actually together with two other questions. I mention it because you will see in few about half an hour why you mention it. It's important that actually they did answer to the plot of game together with two other uh, games of similar structure. So in this way, we got some, almost 2,000 subjects, readers of Calcalist. And again, you will see again and again the reports, reporting the results coming from the classes and coming from Calcalist. There are two differences between in the, in the format. In classes, what it was in English, <coughs> and the, the subjects, actually the, the troops or the fields were ordered in a row. In Calcalist, it was in Hebrew. And, um, Actually, the columns uh, were like, uh, sorry, and the fields actually were ordered in a, in a column. It's not extremely important, but it might have a slight effect on the results. <coughs> okay, now, uh, those of you who read Hebrew, this is one of the, the articles that were reported eventually the results in the list. Okay, now, what do we do in such a situation? Uh, I'm tempted to ask you how do you think, uh, actually, since we have some time, and uh, if one or two, two or three of you want to, to be brave enough to raise the hand and to, to say what is your suggestion about the strategy, it could be helpful. Four times thirty and two times zero. And why that? Why can you explain? Mm -hmm. uh, to say, uh, I would like to maximize uh, uh, the number of troops in a maximal uh, number of fields. So uh, it, it, um, that's that's why. Okay, so here's one suggestion to, to use four times S, uh, you said four times 30, right? Four times uh, 30 and troops and uh, two twice times zero. zero. Okay, and uh, okay, uh, any other suggestion? 1921. Sorry? 1921. 1921, but you have to, 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 you have to give a profile of six, vector of six. 1921. Ah, sorry, 1921, 1921, 1921. Why then? Just. There's a chance to win. There's also a chance to lose. Out of something 37, 33, 39, 40, 2, maybe. Something not focal, for sure. So I want to avoid. Not focal. Okay, I think that there are several. Okay, so let me let me tell you how do I think. About it, and I think that I'm not the only person to think about it. And actually, your thinking here was is starting to go in the direction. I think the first thing that we think about what is the focal one? You mentioned the focal. 
There is one focal distribution, of course, which is the which is to, to choose 20, 20, 20, 20, we call it uniform one, right? That's in some sense the instinctive strategy, just uniformly to split the forces among the six fields. But then, actually, of course, all three of you uh, recognize that this is, you say that it's focal, so focal is not very good here, and uh, you started to think about some variations. So your suggestion actually was to, to concentrate the troops on four, so you give up, you give up two of the fields. You are very much aware of the fact that you're going to lose two of the fields, but you, you, you lose two, but you have good reason. You have good Right, and that's one. So that's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it was uh, you say 1921. I like the 21 because the 21 is that you start to to maneuver a little bit. You feel that actually it might be that many people will choose 20, and therefore you are going to win probably over them on the 21. So these are two factors that get got into your thinking. The way that we are going to analyze the, the, the data is according to uh, the following type, type of procedure. And now I'm going to be a little loose, a little precise. A type of procedure that we believe that many of the subjects uh, follow, which is the following. It's very different. You remember that when we analyze, usually when we analyze games, take the user's dilemma, the battle of the sexes, or other games that you play with in classes or, or, or you research, then usually you think about the strategies themselves. What is equilibrium? Equilibrium is a strategy such that a strategy, such that the strategy is the best response against something. So this is thinking in using the term, using the strategies in the language of the strategy. Our point in here is that we, there, are the, there are ways to think about the game which are not directly through the strategies, but through features of the strategies, dimensions of the strategies. What I mean is that, that what the decision maker does, the player does in such a game, is that you, because of the huge number of strategies and even the huge number of permutations, he thinks about, he makes a decision not about the strategy itself, but in the language of the features. So first of all, what he has to do, he has to consider the several, he, he has to decide about the dimensions, the, the features of the strategy that uh, are relevant to the situation. And of course, it may be that you and you are thinking about different dimensions. But it's very likely that many of you are thinking about common dimensions in this case. Then, what you do is you choose the value of each of the dimensions separately. Examples will come in a second. And then, only then, after you decide about the values in the dimensions, you move to choose about, you move to the strategy, and then you select or pick a strategy which has the values that you have decided before. This is the type of strategies, this is actually the essence of this uh, presentation. We are trying to, to define a set of a procedure or a set of procedures that we believe that is much more wide, uh, widely uh, used uh, in games, which are typically games in life, are of course much more complicated than the simple games, the 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three or 4x4 four four matrix games that we are playing. And given the huge set of strategies and the vagueness actually about what is a strategy, then we believe that something like that is both, uh, that both realistic and also, so we hope, is also a, a, a structured enough, structured enough so that we will be able to eventually to conduct also some, uh, some uh, theoretical analysis on it. Let me be actually now a little bit more precise about the type of strategies that we have in mind. So this slide and the next slide will be actually just an extension of the previous slide. We believe in uh, oh, the type of procedures that we play with uh, have four, uh, four um, uh, stages, but actually uh, we divide them into two sub-stages. The first one, we call it uh, following uh, Reinhard Zelten, 
we, for, we, the first stage is, uh, we call it the editing stage. What is the editing stage? The editing stage is, you are going to play a game in real life. You're going to play with your boyfriend, with your girlfriend, with your teacher, with your, uh, with your grocery shop, with whoever. Okay? So first of all, the first thing that you do, <coughs> the set of strategies is not, is very rarely well defined. It's very rarely well, well defined, and in any case, it's huge. You can do so many things, right? So what we believe is that the first stage, what we do, you, we define the dimension. We define the dimension that are relevant <coughs> to the situation. So we find, we do it, uh, we do it intuitively, or we do it uh, no, intentionally, we define a set of dimensions, and uh, each of the dimensions so, uh, can take a value uh, from some subset, uh, from subset ZI, and, uh, and, and the, for each strategy there is some function TI that, <coughs> that, uh, that assigns the, the, the value of the dimension to the strategy S. So, for example, in uh, the examples that we have here, a strategy is very clear what it is. Uh, so, let's say that one of the dimensions is the number, as we will talk about it in a few minutes, is the number of, uh, of, uh, of uh, frontiers, or the number of battles, where I focus, where I concentrate my tools. Your decision was, actually, explicitly or implicitly, what you have done is that you thought first about the number of this dimension, namely the number of troops, the number of, uh, uh, of battles that you're going to concentrate your troops in, and, and you have decided the value four. Somebody else could decide to concentrate on three or five or one or two and so on. You cannot concentrate on six, of course. Okay. Uh, another example, uh, in the multi-object auctions, the general, in, uh, no, generally the, the blocker game is very, like, very connected to auctions on multi-object auctions, and the multi if you're going to, to, to an auction where actually there is more than one object to be sold, then you might actually first of all decide about the, the sum of all bids made by, uh, by, by yourself, and how much money you're going to bid in general, and then you, you may decide about the number of objects that you're going to focus your, 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 um, your bids on. So these are sort of these are, these, are, these are examples of dimensions that are relevant to a situation like multi-object function. Number two, after you decided about the features of the dimensions, then you are going to use what we call a proper response operator. The proper response operator is, uh, is an operator that tells you if the other, if the other uh, player or the other players are Using, using the value zero, let's say, in a, in a particular dimension, then the best response for me is one, or to go in your direction. If you know that he's going to focus his troops on four dimensions, then actually it might be intuitively best for you to focus on three. Maybe yes, maybe not, but we'll talk about it later. If he's going to concentrate on zero, then it's very clear that the best for you is to concentrate on five. Right. So, uh, so in general, uh, 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 so in general, uh, what we have in mind is that we have some uh, we have some heuristic that tells us that given a choice in a particular now notice, it's unlike the standard game theory. In standard game theory, we have the notion of a best response. There is a best response if he is choosing a strategy S. My best response is S prime. This is thinking not in strategies. This is a thinking method in dimensions. So in each of the dimensions, what we believe here, that the player has in mind a certain proper response. We call it proper response and not best response, just to distinguish, because it's an operator that works on the dimension, uh, in each of the dimensions separately. Now, what is the proper response? What is the logic behind the proper response? So we list here three examples for the log possible logic. So it may be that uh, one thing that you can do is, uh, is to say, OK, you take all the strategies that are a certain value in this dimension, and you calculate some sort of a best response. Usually, it will be very difficult operation. But in principle, we could see this as a logic to the proper response. 
Another possibility could be that what you do is that you take a representative strategy within the dimension and you calculate a best response against it. For example, uh, if I think that you concentrate your troops in, in, four, in, in, four, um, in, in four frontiers, in four battles, then the way that I think about it is that exactly like uh, that I, I, I think about representative strategy, the representative strategy that comes to my mind is exactly the one that you choose, and then I think about 40, 40, 40, 40, 0, 0, what is the best? And the best would be something like 41, 41, 41, and then probably losing on the 40, and then using one, probably some, put some, some, some troops on the, against the 0, the 0. Um, and, and another possibility is that uh, we just use a sort of uh, intuitive heuristic, I always keep on saying. Now, once we do that, then we come to the solution stage. So this is the editing. The editing is moving from the scenario in life, or the scenario that is described to you in the experiment, to something in your mind. And then what we believe you do is, we call it the solution stage, you, is, which is uh, divided into two parts. Part one, what you do is that you choose uh, the value for each of the dimensions. What could, how could you do that? Well, there are several ways to think about it. I, uh, I would like to emphasize now, one possibility is that you treat actually each of the dimensions as a game, and you solve the game in the dimensions. But I would like to actually to skip and to move to C, and which I will demonstrate it again uh, in a few seconds, a few minutes. And uh, in the method C is that you do some sort of what is called uh, in the literature K-level reasoning. K-level reasoning is the method that what I do is that I think about, I start, well, I will describe it in a second, more, uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, exactly, uh, precisely. But then I guess that's a sort of a method you use solution stage, I mean, the third, the method, uh, you use a method to select a value for each of the dimensions. Once you do that, then you decided about each of the dimensions about the value, then you pick a strategy. And you pick a strategy that satisfies, that has the property that in each of the dimensions, it, it, uh, it is uh, consistent with the values of the dimensions that you chose. I know that it's a little abstract here, but in a few Means I hope it will become much clearer. Please. Uh, that line of reasoning presumes that not only does the player choose this CI, but also that the player believes that all the others will choose the same dimensions. Well, not necessarily. Uh, yes. Not necessarily. Again, the question what is uh, in this respect is exactly like any other other game. This is stage three. In stage three, you choose in each of the dimension a value. This is the parallel, this is the analogy to a choice of a strategy in a game. So you choose, in each of the, in each of the dimensions, you choose a value, and you may use the logic of equilibrium. You may use the logic of symmetry equilibrium. You may use uh, a logic of K-level reasoning or any other method. Right. We have to remember, we are all of us brainwashed by Nash equilibrium, but of course this is just one solution concept. And uh, we may apply whatever. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, what, are, what is this? Uh, clearly, most of us don't apply Nash equilibrium, but uh, in regular games, but nevertheless, here we have to put into the description onto the model some method how to select, and not necessarily, uh, actually, the K level reasoning definitely does not assume that. The K level reasoning is just you, you are characterized by, uh, we'll come to it in a second. So, what is the K level reasoning? The K level reasoning here, which will be important in, actually we are going to assume that the players, at least, uh, uh, let me tell you already that we are going to assume that there are three, that people are analyzing this situation using three dimensions. Regarding two of them, we are going to assume that they make the decision using K level reasoning. Again, let me explain what is K level reasoning. K level reasoning is, uh, again, it's a method that uh, in the last 10, 15 years became very, very, uh, uh, widely uh, used uh, and analyzed uh, in experiments using uh, different methods, uh, some of them very compli complicated econometric methods. But in any case, the k reasoning idea is the following. What I do is the following. When I have to, to play a game, uh, to choose a strategy, or in this case, 
uh, when I have to choose a particular value in the range. First of all, I start with some instinctive value. This is what is called step zero. Some of us stop there. Some of us just don't think much. Actually, although the situation is strategic, some of us just choose the intuitive action and go home. Some of us don't stop, and we use uh, uh, we are uh, continue to step one, where what we do is that we we choose a, a, a best in the in, if we talk about a game, then it would be a best response. If we talk about in this context a proper response to the value zero, to the value that was picked in step zero. So some of us we stop there. This will fit situation that I believe, that's also respond to your question, I believe that actually most of the people around actually are very simple-minded and they are just choosing a step zero reasoning. They just go on the instinctive, intuitive action. And then actually, but I feel, believe that I'm a little bit more sophisticated, so I, I choose the best, uh, the proper respond, uh, response to them, and I stop them. But of course, some of us feel that they are more sophisticated, rightly or wrongly, and continue to step two. Namely, I don't stop, I don't choose the, the, the value of step one, but I look for the proper response to step one value and so on. In principle, uh, it could, we could continue in some games forever, but we have good evidence for many, many experiments that actually most of the people in the world go very rarely beyond step three very few uh, continue beyond step two, but uh, and for a variety of reasons that I will not talk about today, and by the way, partially connected also with the way that the language, the regular language is organized. But in any case, uh, it's very difficult to think about, I, I, I do something because he does, because I do, because he does, because I do, that's something that blows our mind, and therefore most of us stop the most in step two or in step three. Okay, so, uh, but, and, so that's what is called the K-level reason. It's not a solution concept like Nash equilibrium. It requires each of the uh, player uh, is characterized by the depth of his reasoning. The depth of his reasoning is the number of iterations that he does in his mind. And here actually we are not going to assume that he is even going to use the same depth of reasoning in all, all, in all, uh, in all uh, features. Namely, he might actually be more simple-minded in one feature, one dimension, and more sophisticated in another. But in a case, that's the idea of the K-level, or the iterative process of the K-level Okay. So let's go into the dimensions. The first dimension that I'm going to show you, uh, I, I that we are uh, conjecturing that many people are using, is that basically the dimension that I think was implicit in your strategy. And this is the number, so again, huge number of strategies. How do I start to think about it? I think that uh, I have good reasons to believe that many of us start to think, uh, we, we have in mind the 2020, 2020, and we start to think about the, the first dimension, which is the number of reinforced fields. The number of fields that I'm going to put actually an extra number of, uh, of, of troops. So, of course, I cannot reinforce, I wish to reinforce six. I cannot, of course. And the question is, therefore, I will reinforce between zero, which is the zero would fit only the, the uniform uh, uh, distribution, or five which would fit something like the 5 times 24, or 4, like the, something like the 4, the, the, the 4 times 30, and so on. So, regarding this, is, there, is this dimension clear? So, first of all, I believe that that's at least the way that I would approach this problem. First of all, I decide how many, where to concentrate my fields. I understand that I cannot, I cannot concentrate on all the fields, and I have to, it's a hard decision, which, by the way, I think that any general in real life, by the way, says, uh, I mean, actually, we cannot fight all the frontiers, and the question whether whether to only west and the, only the west, or both the west and the east and south, and so on and so on. So you are familiar with this dilemma. Okay, so in this dimension, as I say, I think that the step zero, so we believe that the instinctive value is zero. 
and we know reinforcement. By the way, we define reinforcement, reinforcement I, we define as putting more, strictly more than 20 troops on the field. Um, it's not necessarily the only definition, but the definition that we use. So the step zero is, uh, is, uh, uh, is no reinforcement, zero reinforced uh, fields, and this would fit only into the uniform uh, assignment of the troops. What is step one? The logic of step one is, as I said before, here we are using the K-level reasoning, is that I'm looking for a value, how many, again, what is the, the value here is the number of reinforced fields, that in some sense would be a best response, or what we call a proper response against the zero. What is the best way to play, assuming that almost everybody else is playing uh, uh, the step zero, the step zero, uh, uh, or using, uh, choosing uh, a strategy that has a step zero value, maybe zero reinforcement. Of course, five, as we said before. Five, so a typical strategy would be something like the 23, 25, 24, 24, 24, zero, or some permutation of it. This would be a typical strategy that has the feature of five reinforcement, and it would be very good strategy, assuming that almost everybody else in the tournament behaves like step zero. What is step two? Step two, we believe, is a, is a choice which is the best response against a population in which most of the players, or almost all the players, are choosing a strategy with five reinforcement. If I think that most of the people choose a strategy with five reinforcement, then I then it's easy to it's easy to see that the best or not easy it's at least possible to see that the best both intuitively and uh, also in a more uh, precise way the best for me is to concentrate the troops on only four like you suggested. This will give me a good chance to win four battlefields and to be the winner of the tournament. Again, remember that in the tournament, if everybody is using the five reinforcements, then I'm playing with my strategy against everybody, so I'm going to get four points against everybody, and uh, the poor guys will get the most two against me, and something three against themselves, and I will, be, I will get the goal. It's not... It's, uh, there is some uh, question about what is the step three, and I don't want to get into it. Intuitively, I think that the step three is indeed to reinforce three, three uh, uh, battles, uh, three fields, but of course uh, that's open to questions, and again, I don't want to get into uh, two more details. By the way, two reinforcement is not a proper response to three, because the two reinforcement be actually quite disastrous against a uh, population with, uh, which focus on uh, more than three fields. Results. So here is the first uh, 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 table of results and again what is the target? The target in some sense to persuade you intuitively that we do get, of course we don't know exactly what we do. We don't know. But I would like to persuade you that the data, and again let me be very careful, and uh, the data hint that, uh, to some support, that many subjects, not everybody, but many subjects are thinking in the dimensions in a way which at least not contradicting to the, the procedure that we have in mind. So what you have here is on um, the left the number of fields with more than 20 troops, the number of reinforced, and see the numbers. The step zero, and you have the classes and the calculate. The classes, 12% of the subjects, uh, what, uh, let me just explain the, the, the table. So among the classes, 12% of the people choose the step zero, namely the uniform uh, strategy. Among the calculists in Hebrew, uh, among the newspaper readers, 11%, very similar. What you have here is the uh, average score. The average score, as you see, this strategy against the actual uh, distribution did very badly. On average, they got only 224, 204 here. Uh, I will talk in a second about the MRT. 
But again, let me emphasize step one, there is a, we have a little bit more of a, step A, we have 8% or 14% in calculus of step one, 26 and 33 of step two, and we have some uh, very bad strategies uh, that were, for example, what is the one? The one is mainly the strategy 120-000, which of course is a very foolish strategy, but some people of course chose it, and of course their score was very poor. Now, you remember yesterday I talked about the, the response time, so here are some results about the median response time, and these are very important for me to emphasize because of the interpretation that I give to the choice of the, of the step one, especially step one, two, and three uh, 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 K-level reasoning on this dimension. As you see, there is a huge difference between the response time of the step 1 and 2, 182, 192 versus 113, 163, 149, and similarly here, 135, 143 versus 79, and 110, 124. So there's a big difference in the response time, namely the guys who chose the step 1, especially the step 1, step 2, and also presumably step 3, a, 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 a value on this dimension. In overall, we have a clear feeling that they thought about the problem much more than the people who chose other values. In particular, of course, the step zero, which is very important and very popular, and also the, these strategies, which are very stupid, and uh, the, the response time of those guys is very low, and again, the response time of the guys who were, according to our analysis, more sophisticated, you know, the, the chances are more sophisticated, the response time is much higher. Dimension 2. Dimension 2 is connected with your strategy, the 1921-21. Let's say that I decided about, like you, I decided to reinforce four strategies. A4 uh, to reinforce four uh, fields. Now, you came to because of that, you, after this thinking, you, uh, mode of thinking, you, you suggested the 40, 40, 40, 0, 0. I'm sure that if you would think about it a little bit more, then you would think about also the second dimension that we have here, which is the unit, unit digit. Namely, instinctively, we think about multiples of tens, but, but then it comes to your mind, that actually, that comes to her mind, that actually many people will think like you and with multiples and ten of tens. And it would be a good idea actually not to put multiples of tens, but actually to choose digit unit of one. So that I will, I will use only a little bit more strokes, but you will have a good chance to beat those people like you who chose all, only multiples of tens. So the second dimension that we have in mind here is what we call the unit digit dimension. Whether I'm going to use also just, so the step zero is just using, like your strategy, using just multiples of tens, which is again, I think it's a very intuitive, instinctive choice, or to go one step beyond, that's step one, and then to decide to use unit digit one. Of course, you cannot do it in all fields, because you have only 122, so if you if you put one in, in two of them, or three of them, or four of them, or five of them, then you must actually, you cannot put one in the sixth one. Uh, but, uh, but therefore we define step one as using the unit digit one in some other things. And step two is going even one, one step beyond and saying, aha, but many of the guys in this sophisticated audience actually will choose, like you, many uh, digits, uh, unit digit one, so I will be more sophisticated, and so the best response here, or the, the proper response here, will be to use unit digit two, so that to beat people like her, and so on. Now, of course, we don't think that use the digit seven is step seven, that's, of course, uh, very stupid. Again, I don't, in general, because of many, many Many, many papers that were written on the subject in the past, I think that we, we are quite confident that people don't tend to, don't use this mode of reasoning more than, uh, much more than step two, and therefore 
we will stop it there. So this is the second dimension. Uh, let's look, look at the numbers and the results. So what you put, what we put here on this table is the statistics of the use of the unit digit in the populations, classes, and calculus. As you see, uh, so this is what does it mean 62? 62 percent means that 62 of the numbers, 62 of the assignments, 62 percent of the assignments that people were using were multiples of zero, including zero. Right? Uh, 62 in cal classes, a little bit less in calculus. 10% and 13%, so a little bit more than 10% of the numbers that were used were with numbers with unit, uh, uh, unit digit 1. The number 2 is a little bit, uh, of course, is much less popular. It's a little bit more popular than 6, 7, 3, and so on. Another popular number is, of course, 5, because some people think in 5s. And not in, uh, so 25 is another focal number to use. Uh, of course, 9 is also relatively more popular than others, but I think we have good reasons to think that the 9 is popular because it's complement the 1. So people use 1 uh, only once needed to use the 9. Uh, let me go again to the response time uh, uh, issue. In the response time issue, uh, so we have here statistics about... Uh, about uh, 30% of the classes, 38% of the calculus used the unit digit 1 or 2 at least once. So this is about one third of the people indeed were using 1 or 2 at least once. Their response time, and now see the, see the, see the it's quite a dramatic difference. The response time is 2.14 or 1.53, uh, 2.14 in the classes and 1.53 in calculus. By the way, I should, I should forgot to mention, uh, can you please... Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the response time of the calculus people, uh, readers, is shorter in general than of the, gen the classes. There are two reasons for that. I, I'm emphasizing because otherwise we have good reasons to think that actually the readers of calculus, although they were not students of game theory, nevertheless they were in some sense more sophisticated than the students around the world. But the, the fact that they thought less, it's about it, so it's a huge difference, almost one minute of uh, this amount. Uh, there's definitely it's less than one minute, but they thought less than the problem than the classes is uh, partially because it was written in Hebrew. The problem, they got the problem in Hebrew, and Hebrew, and uh, some of you might know it, actually is much shorter language than English. So the text in Hebrew is about uh, one third uh, shorter than the text in English. So it just takes less time to read it. That's at least one of the reasons to the shorter uh, response time. In any case, um, and also I should say that, of course, the, 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 the students around the world, some of them English is not the local, is not the native language, and therefore it's, uh, it's, it's the reading word. So that's in, in the calculus, actually, all, almost all the readers, uh, Hebrew is the, their native language, so that's one of the explanations to the reading. Now, compare the 214 with the 45% who use only multiples of tens. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, when you see, so these are the two populations which are uh, interesting to compare regarding this dimension and see the huge difference in the response time. 214 versus 137, 153 versus 106. So, to conclude, the guys who were using the, the one and two, they did not do it just by coincidence, but they spent about more than one minute more, which is, of course, a lot here, on the problem than the people who just used the multiples of 10. Dimension three, and the last one, dimension three is more problematic, and it's less important. And this is, uh, you, 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 you say 30, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 0, 0. And of course, you did not uh, really thought about the question, actually, where to put the, the, sorry, 30, 30, 30, 30. And you did not thought about, didn't think about the problem, where to put the 30, 30, 30, 30. The question is whether it, whether it is not. Um, to simplify my response, I, I said 
Uh, fine, fine, so it's not a tech of yours. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so the, the, of course, the question is where to put, if, even if you decide to put 4 times 30, is where to put the two zeros. And uh, this is the third dimension. This is the third dimension. And uh, as, as, as I said before, I think it's less important, but it definitely exists. And, um, uh, and actually, and what are the questions? The questions, in some sense, what are the values of this dimension? I think that the main question in this dimension is whether to focus the troops on the center or on the edges, or if you neglect two, troops, uh, two fields, whether to choose the neglected fields to be on the edges or on the center. Now, here I we don't think about, we don't want to analyze it in K-level reasoning because it's not absolutely clear to us what is the level zero. I think that the level zero, but I'm not sure, the level zero is actually to focus, to put the troops on the center to concentrate, and you say no, and I, and I might agree with you, that's fine. I don't, uh, so delete this sentence. In any case, there are here, basically there are two values. One of them is to, to if you, to concentrate uh, the, the reinforced uh, fields, to choose them in the center, or to choose them in the edges, one of the two is a sort of dimension, another dimension that one has to decide. Yeah. What aspect of the rules makes the positioning at all relevant? Nothing. None. None. Good question. None. But that's exactly the point. None, but nevertheless, we have good evidence from also other uh, research that actually people, when they you have to make a sort of assignment along a line, or when you have to choose a position in some geography, even if the game is completely, the position is irrelevant to the game, nevertheless, psychologically, it does. For example, if, uh, if we play a sick and eye game, uh, if you play with me a sick and eye game on, let's say, a five by five matrix, okay, I think that there is a very good chance that you will, uh, that uh, you, will you will put the, uh, uh, you will hide yourself in one of the, in the center three by three. That's just a fact, a fact about experimental effect. So people, it, definitely you get something which is very, very far, actually far by more. I have a good reason to think that many of us will put the, the treasure, will hide whatever they hide, in the second row, uh, actually not in the center itself, but actually in one of the four positions, which are the B2, B4, D2, D4, the chess, in the chess coordinates. Okay. That's just a fact. So just people don't do it. So in spite of the fact that everything is symmetric, then psychologically we don't read it like that. Some people will be more sophisticated. I will be more sophisticated since I know it. And definitely I will hide my treasure not in these points, but probably on the edges. And maybe that you know me and therefore you will now seek the treasure, etc., etc. But in general, I think that there is a good reason to think that actually this is de definitely not a problem. But thanks for the question. Yes. When you say in the center, you mean uh, position four and fourth, or just inside? Okay, so. When you say zeros, zeros in the center, you mean it's uh, battle field three and four, or okay. Okay. just somewhere inside? Okay, so actually there is another question which is whether there is a symmetry between left and right. And uh, you will see in a second the result. There is a slight asymmetry between left and right as well. But we ignore it here. The main the main question I think is whether you put in one six or three four. You will see the Sorry? Randomization one. one. why should you randomize if you play against many players? But why should you randomize? Well, it's another issue, but uh, I don't think that people really randomize as a sort of as a, uh, in games like that. You don't have to. You don't want to mislead other people. Uh, you, you know that you play against a huge population. You want to be the best. So one should be one. In any case, uh, uh, this is the third dimension, the less important. Nevertheless, here you see the results. What you see here is the, the, the competitive the distribution of the location. Uh, and uh, what you see here is actually, I hope you see it. 
well enough, or the colors are not clear, but the order is, uh, the order you see the order on the top actually in some sense, so you, you have the distributions and the following is the case, people concentrate a little bit more on three in the following order, three, four, two, five, one, six. So more on three, four, then on two, five, then on one, six. So that's number one. And second, there is a little bit putting more emphasis on the left, probably because people start actually to allocate, allocate the, the troops from the left, and then they just find out they, they ran out of troops. Uh, and that's probably one of the explanations, one there is a also, slight asymmetry. No, the Hebrew actually was actually in Kalkalis, they started, it was in a, in a colony, and definitely they started from the top. But by the, by the way, I don't think that that's an issue because even in, in Israelis, who actually, if you give them a problem like that, they start with numbers, they start from there. Yeah, okay, so that's, you see that there is a slight difference, the dimension is slightly important here, it's not dramatic, but it's slightly. Now, um, uh, we, wanted, uh, uh, we wanted to persuade ourselves and the world that indeed people think in Caleb the reasoning uh, method. And what we did, if you remember that I told you that the readers of Calcalist actually had to respond not only to the, this problem, but then also another question that we asked them. And actually this other question was asked before, and this is connected to a game that uh, Ayala, Rand, and me uh, invented and uh, analyzed in a paper that's coming out in AR now, uh, which we call, uh, actually in the paper it's called the We 11 20 money request game, but in the version that we played here it's called 91 100 money request game. Uh, so what is this game? This game is, uh, so in the next five minutes I would like to talk with you about another game, but let me immediately explain why do I talk about it here because I, we would like to strengthen um, the intuition, our intuition, that indeed people um, who chose a level, uh, um, uh, chose the values of the dimensions that I described before, were thinking uh, in a K-level, uh, using a sort of a K-level reasoning process. And the, the way that we try to, uh, uh, to elaborate on that is by actually comparing their behavior in this game with another game. And in the other game that I will describe in a second, this other game was designed, we designed it from, from, the, first, from, the, uh, from the beginning in order to elicit the level of K-level reasoning of people. And here is the game. Now it's not a tournament, it's only a two-player game. You play against somebody that you don't know. Each player has to request an amount of money between 91 and 100 shekels. Okay, each of you requests a number between 91 and 100 shekels. Each player will receive the amount he requests. Okay, each player will receive the amount he requests. But, in addition, if a player, if a player requests exactly one shekel less than the other, then you will receive an additional 100 shekels. Let me repeat. So you have to choose one of 10 strategies. 91, a number between 91 and 100. The interpretation, that's what you will demand. On top of, you will get what you demand, but on top you will get 100 shekels if you will, if you will quote, you will demand a number which is exactly one less than your opponent. Is the game clear? Uh, again, in the, uh, in the, we are going to report about results among the Calcalist readers. This was done virtually, but in the, in the paper with I aligned the AR, actually, we played with this 11-20 money uh, request game with real money. Uh, uh, so people really go, go check it. Uh, um, uh, 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 this is just to please the, the referees, otherwise I would not do it. But, uh, um, uh, is, it, is the game clear? Somebody wants to, to be brave enough to say what you would choose. 97. 97. Why? Good. 
Can you explain why it's level three? Okay, I will do it for you because, of course, uh, everybody starts with the, the focal, the level zero, the intuitive action here is 100, right? To demand more, there's no reason to start with anything less. But then, the, if, if the, my opponent uh, will choose 100, I will, it's best for me to choose 99. But if he is sophisticated to think about it, and I'm a little bit more, so the level two is 98. And the level 3 is 97, and uh, I think that the identification of this case, usually it's not clear at all what is the level K business a strategy, but in this game it was desi designed, so we believe that, uh, so we believe that, uh, that uh, the, the identity of the meaning of a strategy here, uh, nobody thinks here in uh, terms of equilibrium, I will show you in a second what is the equilibrium here, it's, 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 it's very strange. And it's very unintuitive. And I think that in this is a game that really is calling for K level reasoning. Let me explain why. The game is very simple. There is a very clear focal beginning, 100. The best response here in this case is very simple. Right? It's very, the calculating the best response is very simple. Uh, and also, I should say that this game. Unlike many other, like uh, those of you who know the Basu Traveler's Dilemma game and games like that, this game was designed in a way that uh, you don't have uh, what we call now social preferences. I mean, or let's say the social preferences here are very weak. Because, uh, of course, if both of us say the same number, then nobody gets uh, the 100, right? So if both of us say 100, then, uh, then uh, then we would get only the 100. So if I, I move to 99, it's not, in the, it's not in the expense of the other player. Right? You would get still the 100, but I will get 199, if you care. So it's not, I like the Basu game, the Traveler's Dilemma, where if I beat you by one, uh, if I beat you, then I get uh, actually something on the expense, in the expense of the other player. And therefore, we have some social preferences entering into the consideration. So that's why we are happy with this game, and we believe that we can, I think, uh, very modestly, unmodestly, let me say, that I think that this is the best uh, game that I know uh, to elicit uh, K-level reason of some um, The equilibrium here, uh, of course, th this game does not have the pure equilibrium, of course. Remember that 91, unlike uh, the, the Basu game, the Tarlos Dilemma 91 is not, uh, is not equilibrium because if you choose 91, the best for me is to choose 100. So there is no pure equilibrium here, but there is only, uh, there is only uh, so this is the symmetric uh, mixed strategy equilibrium. Uh, so it's 55% 50 is 91, 9% 92, and so on and so on. Only 1% 100. Of course, that's assuming that people are expected payoff maximizer. Without any risk aversion, with risk aversion, it will be more bizarre. But without risk, if people just maximize the expected money, then this is the bizarre Nash equilibrium. Again, very few people choose the upper numbers 199, 98, 97. Only 10% choose according to the equilibrium. But that's not so bizarre in the sense, or not so special, because we know that many games actually there is no connection between Nash equilibrium and the experimental results. Here it's another example where the contrast is very bold. And you have now, you have on the second line, you have the experiment the results. Uh, as you see, the most uh, significant point is that very few people choose the 91, 18% versus the 55 that the Nash equilibrium predicts. But, and more importantly, you have 32, you have 61% um, uh, uh, of the subject, 61% of the subject uh, choose a number between 97 and 100 versus only 10% according to the equilibrium. So that's the huge difference between the results uh, of the equilibrium and here. Yes. So is choosing 91 a, a, a K level reasoning of of one, or is the K level reasoning of ten? Okay, that's a good. Ninety-one. If, if it's an outcome of K level reasoning, then it would be of K of nine. But I don't think that anybody chose the, the ninety-one because of K level. Well, why? 
because in, in my thinking, I thought, okay, one down, 99, and as soon as I do, I say, okay, here's a rule. Just one right. down, so... Right. right, so that's not exactly... I thought two steps. You stopped, you're right, but you use actually, your second step was actually lucky. Right. That's fine, it's fine. The second, the second step was inductive, right? You, you started at 99, 98, and you went to 91. You did not notice that actually you should not stop there, because actually the 100 is the best response to 91. But you, a little bit, you were influenced by also the, by, I guess, games like the Rosenthal's game, or the, the Centipede game, or the Basu game, which actually stops in the end. In this case, actually, that you should not stop, you should go to the beginning. But, uh, but that's definitely one possibility to interpret the 91. It's not exactly the K-level reasoning, but it is using also some iterative, iterative uh, inductive uh, thinking explicitly or implicitly. Um, um, I think that to, to, to uh, I don't believe, uh, of course, there is no chance that you use level 9. Because, uh, for example, if instead of 91, 100, we would say 81, 100, you would go to 81, yeah. not to 91. So it's not level 9. And uh, as I said before, it is, uh, I don't believe that anybody is using K level 9. And, uh, but some people like you who do some sort of inductive step. In this case, actually, in some sense, you were wrong because you did not go there. Okay. So, but in any case, I think that you will agree with me that in this case, step, step zero, one choos choosing of 100 it sounds like step zero. Uh, step one is the 99, step two is the 98, and step three is the, uh, 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 is the 97. Now, if you agree with me about that, then now we can, uh, we can try to compare the, the, the levels, the, 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 the choice. So what we are going to, sh to check now is what is the correlation between behaving like L1, L2, level 1, 2, or 3 in the money request game, whether it's correlated with what? With reinforcement of 3, 4, 5 uh, fields in the plot of game, and with the tendency to choose uh, uh, to use the unit digit one and two in the block game. That's how the, this is the question. Of course, what we wanted to get is that the correlation is as strong as possible because this will be the uh, strengthening of our interpretation of the result. If I continue, let me just tell you one thing, which is my experience, and all, not only my experience, is that one of the nice things, some people will say one of the bad things about human beings is that they don't use the same strategy, the, the same procedure in different games. Namely, the correlation between the fact, if I know how do you play one game, it gives you, it gives me very little information about the way that you play, uh, you play another game. So although in our models, in some of the models that you will see in the literature, a person is a level two, a level one, or level three, and I don't think that there is really characteristic like level two or three or one. The most is that there is some characteristic of whether you, 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 you use this type of reasoning at all or not. And that's actually what we try to, uh, to, to find. Uh, these two games are only different in some important aspect. Namely, that in this game, uh, when you block a game, uh, Level 2 beats boss level 1 and level 0. Uh, and uh, and, and this, in, in, the, in the last game, uh, level, level 2 beats level 1, but doesn't beat level 0. In the sense that you don't gain anything, uh, you know, if the, your opponent plays level 0, then you play level 2, you, you don't get the additional 100. Yeah, you, you, your question is good and it's related to actually, there are different, there are some variations to the level K reasons. Uh, but I, I think that what I want here is actually to emphasize just the very naive way of reasoning. I agree with you completely. And that's again, that's actually the beginning. Your question is the beginning of some distinction which appears in the literature between different definitions of k level reasoning. Uh, but, but nevertheless, I think that if I think that everybody will agree with me, that if I think that everybody or most of the people choose the number of 100, then the best for me is 99. If most of my components choose the 99, then the best for me is 98, and so on. And I think that at least, like he instinctively chose, he said 97, immediately he said it's level 3. 
right? Uh, so I think that it's, it's an intuitive way of reasoning, uh, whether it's accurate in some sense or whether there are some substitutions, that's absolutely, you're absolutely right in your questions. Okay, uh, let me show you some results here. And what you see here is the following. So this is the correlation between the two gains uh, regarding, in this case, uh, dimension one. So here you have dimension, uh, dimension one, the number of reinforced fields, versus, uh, versus being um, Caleb Riesner in the 91.100. And they, especially I would like to draw your attention to this ellipse. So as you see, among the people who were choosing step, well, step zero, in the, namely they chose the 2020 uniform 20 uh, strategy, only 34%, only 34% chose a number between 97 and 99 in the, in the, in the demand game. On the other hand, people who were choosing uh, 5 or 4 reinforced fields, namely they are classified as steps 1 and 2 by our analysis, their pro proportion of choice of 97-99 is much, much, much higher. Again, this difference uh, is a huge difference, significant in any, any test that you will test to use, especially uh, given the, the, the large number of subjects. Now, of course, you may be probably disappointed that the number here is not higher and the number here is not lower, but as I told you before, if you want to, if you believe that you will get one day results like that, I am sure you will not. Because again, people do not behave the same way. You might may be instinctive in one, action, one game and not instinctive in the other game. But there is some correlation. And I think this is the, for, I think that overall, this is the, this is, these are good results of correlation between playing the game here and here. And therefore, we, we uh, feel that this is an evidence which supports our uh, approach. Again, we don't claim that everybody, uh, we don't claim that this is the only interpretation of the results. The only thing that we say, we get some results that support this direction of thinking. Uh, in the other dimension, in the unit digits number, you see here we organize the results a little bit different. Among the guys who were uh, Caleb reasoning in the 91-100 demand game, the, the mean number of fields with digit 102, 1.22, which is much higher than among the rest of the population. Uh, let me uh, let me. Uh, oh, let me skip on that. Uh, uh, finally. Uh, Wikileaks. Um, so uh, this part of the, 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 the last few minutes of this talk, I would like to talk, tell you a little bit about the results. Uh, that, uh, these are the secret files of Proto. Uh, let me again emphasize, this is not the center of this lecture. This is just for fun. Full stop. Uh, so what are the questions that you are interested in? So you are probably interested what to do if you are going to play the game again. Uh, so here are the, first of all, these are some results about the popular uh, strategies. By the way, again, I don't remember if I told you, but I probably I did, that the number here of subjects is huge. It's more than 4,600 subjects in the classes and almost 2,000 technical calculists. And uh, here you have the popular, the popular strategy. Number one, number one is of course the uniform distribution, the level, the K level, the level zero, and I think that you, of course the popularity of this strategy is another proof, if you need one, that indeed this is the beginning of the strategic reasoning in this case. Eleven percent here, eleven percent here, very, very low score. Uh, uh, what are the rest? The, the, well, the, more, the other popular strategies are these two. The one that you mentioned is number two, 4.5%, uh, 4.6%. 4 4 uh, they are doing a little bit better than, than the uniform distribution. This is another very uh, popular uh, strategy. This silly strategy 
that's definitely a proof that some of the subjects here did not understand the game or did not take it seriously because 2% here and only 1% in the readers of the newspaper chose this very silly strategy. Uh, here we come to strategies that you will see in a few minutes that actually you see actually already now that is much more successful. The 21 five times, one time 15, which is actually using the level, the first level of the dimension of the reinforced num uh, fields and the first level also on the unit digit. This actually is quite successful relative actually in this, among the 10 strategies, it's the most successful. It's the score, the average score is 3.19. And this was selected by 1.5% in the calculus and 3.3% uh, in the classes and more than 3% the calculus. As I told you, in general, the feeling is that the readers of the Israeli newspaper were a lot more sophisticated than the, the, the other. Uh, the 5 times 24, there's another focal strategy which fits very well to the level 1 thinking, right? If you decide to allocate 5, if you decide to, to concentrate on 5 fields, then the, 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 the focal strategy is 5 times 24. So this is also quite a popular strategy. That's another 4 times 30. This is the 3 times 40, which is the level uh, 1 to 3 uh, on this dimension, with zero dimension on the unit digits. And this is, again, uh, like here. So these are the most popular strategies. Uh, overall, you see that uh, the 10th, uh, the, uh, the, actually it's the 9th top uh, strategies. These are all the strategies that got more than 1%. Uh, then uh, they, they, they sum up to something like 30% of the strategies are, are concentrated on exactly nine strategies. Uh, wow. Sorry. Sorry. What was the most successful? Oh, well, that's well, you have to wait. This is the real top secret. <laughs> Popular permutations. It's more interesting actually to see the popular permutations because, of course, uh, blah, 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 blah. And here you, will, you see the popular permutations. So the most popular permutation is uh, the one which does not have permutation, which is the, six, the uniform one. We talked about it before. The level two, the 30, 30, 30, 30. Again, now we talk about this strategy. I mean, all the, strategy, all the permutations of the six numbers. Uh, so this is 11% or 13% in the calculus. So these are the two most popular, by far, the most popular permutations. Uh, the other uh, popular are the 12000, the silly one, which is about 5% here and 3% here. The 3 times 40, 4% 4 here and about 4% here. Um, and so on. The 5 times 30, the 5 times 24, of course, is also quite popular. And uh, this strategy, which is the more sophisticated one, is, uh, is related. Is, uh, the, the, uh, here I put all the strategies, all the permutations got more than 2% in at least one of the two, uh, the two uh, uh, samples. Notice, by the way, that with all the differences, you see also a lot of, a lot of uh, regularities between the similarities between the two results in the two samples. Uh, and remember that overall what we try to do in experimental work is look for, we look for regularities and regularities we try to define in a way that will be independent of uh, the language uh, or the, the, the nation uh, or the age or the gender and so on. Okay, winners. That's what you wanted to get. So I, still I hide it with the number one. But here you see the other strategies. And these are the top 10, uh, uh, top ten uh, winners in the classes tournament and the calculus tournament. Now, before I continue, let me say that I'm a little bit cheating. Among the calculus tournament, I don't cheat. I don't uh, cheat, namely because the students, uh, the readers were told that actually they will be uh, matched one against the other. By the way, I forgot to mention is that we promised that the top three uh, names will be published in the newspaper. And that actually was the real incentive, and we did it actually, and people were very happy to be mentioned in the newspaper. It's amazing actually how people love to be mentioned in the newspaper. You can, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of paying subjects on rubles or dollars, promise them to publish it in some local newspaper and they will be free. 
much, much stronger in the center. In any case, uh, and now in the classes I'm making cheating because actually uh, the incentive was that you will be declared by your teacher to be the winner in the class. So actually here actually the, the, the tournament of the classes was if you were in Moscow, you were playing against the other students in your class. And here actually I, the computation is done as if actually all the students, all the 46 other students were actually matched in one big group. So that's the little cheating that I'm doing here. And uh, so what you see, uh, you see, uh, st still you don't see the top one, the top, uh, the top one in the classes, the top one in the class, I want to, to keep the attention. Uh, but you see already some of the, the features of the, of the top strategies. You see the score, the score you could get, the top guys could get something like 3.8, which is on average, which is quite high. Uh, you see what you see. You see one thing that you see already quite quite interesting, which is you see this strategy number four in the classes. The same strategy exactly was number four in the calculus. Remember, the number of strategies is something like 250 million strategies. Nevertheless, the same strategy was number four here and five here. Number five here is exactly the same strategy like number six here. Number seven here is exactly the strategy that was number eight here. That's, I find, a remarkable effect, given the fact that, it's again, it's a very, it's an example of how regu strong regularity exists in spite of the fact that things are so messy and different. And now you are really want to see what is the top two strategies. Surprise, surprise, exactly the same strategy. Exactly the same strategy was the winner here and here. This is a miracle. I don't have any explanation. And of course, it would be sensitive uh, if I would delete uh, some hundreds, uh, several hundred uh, students here, it will not be exactly the same. Uh, so it is, don't take it too seriously. It's, by the way, we did check. We were surprised, of course, and what we did is that we get the computer to try what is the best strategy against the population that we had. Uh, we, could, uh, the, we could not run the computer on the 250 million strategies. It's quite, uh, quite a work even for the computers. But we did uh, do, uh, so we did, uh, but we did do actually uh, uh, checking of, uh, of, of many thousands of strategies which were around the strategies that we have here. And uh, we, did, we did not find a better strategy. <coughs> so we did not find a better strategy against this particular pop uh, population. So what are the features of this uh, winning strategy? <coughs> well, as you see, the features are exactly are very, very consistent with, uh, with the analysis <coughs> that we have done. The guys, uh, what they did, they decided to to concentrate on very clearly, they concentrate on four fields. Right? By the way, most of the the top strategies, most of them are with uh, four, like you, with four uh, concentration on four battles, uh, battlefields. Second, uh, they did not use uh, multiples of tens, right? but they were very careful. And actually, uh, number one here and here, and also some other were. Did not use only once, they use also several, two, and even three. That's the second dimension. The third dimension, they focus on the center, namely the neglected fields were on the edges, and we have seen that this was the place that people put in the most zeros. Um, actually, uh, the, uh, we, did, we don't ask students to explain the strategies, but nevertheless, I was uh, tempted to write an email to the to the Calcalis winner and to congratulate him to a big achievement, to ask him permission to to mention his name in the newspaper. But I also ask him if he can explain how did he come to this uh, miraculous strategy. And I here is the translation he wrote in the Hebrew, but here is the translation of his explanation. In the first stage, again, let me, he did not read this paper, the paper was not written. This is completely natural, right? This was his explanation, word by word. In the first stage, I decided, it's not word by word, it was in Hebrew, but translation. In the first stage, 
I decided I would surrender on two fronts, but not so easily. I thought that other people would decide to assign a few battalions to some of the fronts and perhaps would not deploy any battalions to other fronts. So I could win on an abandoned front at the inexpensive price of one battalion. Eventually, I decided to deploy two battalions on the weak fronts in order to overpower anyone who thought like me and place one battalion on the weak fronts. Beautiful K level, K equal to, on the second dimension. It seems logical to me, the word logical to me is interesting, uh, that the weak fronts would be on the edges. So this is explicit uh, 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 mentioning of the third dimension. He was talking about the edges. It was logical, I would use the word logical, but he used logical that the weak fronts would be on the edges. I was left with 116 battalions to allocate to four fronts, which is an average 29. I decided to reinforce three of the four remaining fronts with two battalions, that is to deploy 31 battalions in order to defeat those who allocated the remaining battalions equally. In this way, I would also defeat those who allocated 30 battalions to each of the four central fronts. So I think that this is the, the, three, the three dimensions very, again, he did not think about the strategy like we teach in game theory or like Nashikuru suggests. Not at all. The reasoning was not in the strategy. The reasoning was in the dimensions. And he very clearly, very clearly, he refers to the three dimensions and very clearly also talks about uh, responding to the level zero and even to the responding to the level one. Uh, and on the previous slide, you have this best strategy for the, the highest score. I mean, but in terms of uh, battlefield winning distribution. I mean, how out of this best strategy, for example, in class tournament, how often the field of battlefield uh, he won with the strategy on battlefield one or two or three or four or five or six? Uh, but that's the show one, what, I mean, how the first... Well, I can, I have the results here, so we can talk about it later. It's, it's not... Uh, but at least it will show how uh, successful is this strategy of... Uh, uh, yeah. Or, uh, well, you could, uh, if you look at these numbers, here you could see it actually, you could get it from this information. We could go step by step because here you have actually the distribution of each of the fields. So let's say, uh, you know that let's say 31, 31 would win, the number 31 would win on uh, in around 80, 80 something percent. No, but it's about the best, the most successful strategy. I mean, in terms of how good is reasoning you are. You, you can check by looking how often uh, field with two battalions win and how often uh, he won. Yeah, but he did not, of course, he did not know this distribution, but we yeah. can just check. I mean, I, again, I, I, I'm putting it not because it's the right way to think, but it's because it's, it's, it fits so well into the, into the method or the, the procedure that we, 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 we guess or conjecture that many people use. Um, regressions. I added the word God forbid in Hebrew words, Hashem Yerachem. I don't do it usually, but nevertheless, we did it here for fun. Uh, so the regression was done in the following way. We try to see uh, what are, the, what, what are the, the importance of the dimensions. So I took the verbal A, we took the verbal A to be one if the subject reinforces five fields, two if the subject reinforces four fields, and zero otherwise. In B, it's the number of fields in which the subject uses unit uh, digit one or two. And sequel one means that the number of troops allocated to each of the extreme fields was strictly less than the number of allocated troops allocated to each of the fields in the center. So these are the three dimensions, and we try to see the regression of the score, the average score, versus uh, these uh, variables. What we got here is these two uh, equations, which are quite similar in the classes and the expert and the economist. As you see, it's two. Let's say the first one you see two point four point thirty forty one plus point twenty eight times a plus point zero a. Sorry, 0.10 times B plus 0.20 times C. 
Which means what? It means, I think, that we think that actually, first of all, of course, you see, uh, remember that A could get value 0, 1, and 2, B can get actually several, uh, uh, even value 5. But in any case, it seems that the most important, given this, it seems that the most important uh, actually factor, dimension, is indeed the number of rainforest fields. The last, uh, the position itself is much less important, at least according to this regression. Uh, um, time. Is time important? So again, we did regressions, um, look at the, le in the in the bottom, so the score of the classes is equal to 2.07 plus 0.12, the LAN of the response time. And the variable that we used was the LAN of the response time, and you see that there is the regression predicts that there is a strong correlation between the response time and the success. So to think more is good, not always, but at least in this game. Uh, actually, I think that the more I, I don't like so much regressions, sorry, but uh, I, I like this sort of statistics. And I think that this statistic is more appealing because what you could see here is the following. And you see that this is quite similar to this. You see, uh, here is actually the D size, the response time by D size, and this is the average, the mean score. As you see in the, in the, in the middle six D size, actually the differences are not big. Difference are not big, not here and uh, not here. But the big difference is that the the, the, the lower, the bottom two D size, namely these are the people who thought very quickly, they did very badly, right? They did very badly. On on the other extreme, the guys who thought much more, namely the one fifth of the crowd, both here and here, devoted much more time to the problem. They were much more successful. So, uh, so I think that what we see here actually, again, those of you who have been yesterday, I think that this is another hint to what I try to do in my life now, with, uh, not in my life, but uh, 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 in my life, not with my life, sorry, in my life, uh, namely is uh, actually is exactly to talk about uh, three type of, uh, in, in this, uh, three types of, uh, of, of economic agents. Uh, something like one quarter of the guys who are much slow, more big thinker, one quarter who are sloppy and sticky, and between the majority of, let's say, 50% of the population that are in the middle, and the behavior of them is very, some, in many problems, look very different. And here you see one example where actually the response time that you see that the, the, the guys who think much more are much more successful, the, the, the sloppy guys are much less successful, and, uh, and, and, and between is between. Uh, next question. Is, is, uh, you remember, economies, uh, I, I should say that among the, the, uh, among the economy students, uh, readers, I, we did ask also two questions. Uh, usually, I, as I told you yesterday, I don't like to ask personal questions, uh, subject. But we, in this case, we did ask the gender, and we did ask uh, the question whether people uh, study get theory before. And you see why? Because I, now I'm interested in the following question: Was get theory useful in the silly way? And was get theory useful? Did the fact that you started this, you started get theory help you to play this game? Okay, help you to, to play this game. And the answer is a little bit, uh, very little. The average score of graduates of game theory was 2.78 versus 2.79 of the other. If you study game theory only for that, don't study game theory. <laughs> uh, but but, uh, and, uh, and the last fact that you might be interested in was about gender. So here I regretfully have to report that among the economists, the males were more successful than females, actually. The gap here is much, three times the gap between gap theory, these additions or not, 2.75 versus 2.55. But let me comfort all of us that this is, uh, might be uh, because of a very sad fact about the economists, which is 90% of the readers are males. 
So the, the, the female population there was very small, it's only a few hundred, uh, which is a problem for the economies and they were, uh, for the Kalkanis, and they were already took care of it, but that's completely different issue. Uh, that's my conclusion. Uh, this, is me. this is me when I was a child, as you see, when I was a child, I, this is Purim, which is a fancy dress, I was fancy dressed to a, not a colonel, but my father was a captain in some uh, civil defense, uh, civil defense uh, unit. So that's the most that I, was my inspiration. So actually my interest in the general lot game was probably probably want to be a general, but I am not. So, so that's what made me uh, thinking about these sort of things. But again, let me repeat uh, on the beginning, actually the target of this paper was not to talk about the general lotto. The, the target of this paper was, or this project, is to, 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 uh, to get some insight, and I'm very careful here in the world, it's only to get some insight about the, the procedures that people are using when they play a game. Let me mention again Reinhard Zelten. Uh, Reinhard Zelten, I think, was uh, pioneering in this approach, and uh, he has many papers uh, where actually he tried to elicit from data a different type of procedures that people are using in different in different games. I think that going back to the to the general topic of this uh, series of lectures, uh, boundary rationality. Of course, we can proceed just by introspection, and I think that personally I do much of introspection before I construct a model. But I think that it would could be very interesting to look also at data and to get some support. Again, some support some insight, not more than that. And the reason that I don't think there is any chance, at least in, not in, the, in our lifetime, to get much more than that is again because of something which personally I think is a good thing, which is people are very different. People are very different, different people in this audience, although most of you are Russians and most of you were studying in mess, etc., etc. Nevertheless, you are not the same people. And you behave in the same game, you will, uh, you will behave differently. And furthermore, it's very likely that you will, if, if I ask you the same question in a gap of a few days or weeks or months, then it's very likely, or even one after the other, there is a, a tendency to diversification and diversification. We are diversified uh, uh, creatures. And we, I think we diversify in many ways, in, in among ourselves and among uh, behaviors of ourselves, uh, and uh, this creates actually, uh, I wouldn't say no hope, I don't think that it's an hope, I think it's a mistake to think about it as an hope, I think that there is this obsession of many of my colleagues, uh, uh, our colleagues, uh, to, 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 to look for one theory, one explanation of behavior in general, in, in, in games like that in, in particular, I think it's, it's pointless, it's wrong. I think the most that we can do, and that's not little, is to try to find some regularities, and the regularities will be statistical, it will not be that everybody is doing the same. It's, it's, it's quite a miracle in some sense, which I cannot explain why in the classes, why the results in the classes and the results in, in, in among the calculist readers are overall similar. They are similar and there are differences. Though I did not mention it, but if I look at the, at the large classes, of course, if I take a small class, then it's not meaningful. But if I have uh, several dozen, we have about 12, 15 classes which were big, big, I mean that there were more than 150 subjects, then or 20 subjects, then in the big classes, again, you see phenomena which are quite similar. It's not always, this strategy did not, this particular study did not win any of the of the large tournaments in the classes, but the, the, if I show you the, 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 the studies that won in the in the big classes, they are quite similar. They are quite similar in, in, to this in, in exactly in the dimensions in dimensions that I mentioned before. So again, the goal is not to predict the future. The, the, the goal is not to give advice to somebody who is going to play to. Uh, general in the Russian army or, in, in the, or, to, the, or to somebody who's going to make uh, to behave in multi-bid multi uh, uh, but uh, 
but, uh, uh, but the target is just to understand a little bit better these types of strategies. And the dream, again, the dream is that exactly what I align to be we are doing at the moment, is that we try to, we, we hope to take, uh, to build a sort of a small model where actually the players will be have a, a, a more or less according to this type of, a type of a, a procedure and to see the interaction. Because the big thing, the real things that are going on in economics and that theory are not in the single decision makers, uh, maker uh, arena, but when these decision makers are interact and that's future research. Thank you. have no more time left, but I'll give one question anyway, uh, if someone has a really pressing question. But, you, but given that you know that your question is the most important question, it's the only reason you can ask it, uh, raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll, we'll get it back tomorrow. Okay? Here's one question. You, 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 okay, here's the most important question. <laughs> Does there exist any strategy which would win, uh, but wasn't offered by anybody? No, that's what I said before, that I did, uh, I probably was not clear, I, I did, we did try, I cannot swear on that, but we, we I figured we tried a, a big center of strategies around the area that seems to be candidates, and we did not find anything that fit this one. So it's very, uh, let, me, let me say with probability, 0.95, my answer is, uh, and I'm cautious guy, that I think that this is the best against this population. Okay, so thank you again, and tomorrow we'll be here again.